I'm going to take you through every step of the way of getting from this cube into a working avatar in VRChat with, um, it'll probably be very simple, look something like this. You can use these same steps to make more impressive avatars, but uh, this is fun for me in VRChat. Um, we're going to do things like eye tracking and uh, uh, mouth shapes all from scratch with the inside of the mouth and everything, maybe even fingers. It's going to be rigged. We're going to do it all in Blender and Unity. Um, uh, you're going to see the buttons I pressed down here. And uh, if your Blender doesn't look like that right now, with these buttons over here and saying a number greater than 2.8 over here, you're going to want to look for my old video. I'll link it below uh, for the older version of Blender. So the first thing we're going to do is, um, well, delete these because we don't want to export them into our avatar. Um, we're going to look at this. This is um, a 2 by 2 by 2 meter cube. I'm going to look at it from the side, and I'm going to move it up by one unit. So this is about the height, maybe a bit taller than most people, um, 2 meters. Uh, we're going to try and stick to the scale so we don't have to scale it around later. Um, though you can do that. The first thing we're going to do is uh, decide what we're going to make. And uh, I'm going to do it all in Blender because there's a tool, if you hold on D and start drawing with the mouse, you can actually draw things and undo and you can draw and use right click hold down D and right click to erase. So we're just going to scribble out from the front what our character looks like. And this is just a head, so I kind of want it a little smaller. Okay. We're going to have some eyeballs because we want uh, eye movement. And uh, let's say this is his nose. I'm going to give him a big mouth so I can give him big exaggerated mouth movements. And that's going to open up. We're going to have an interior to that mouth. I'm going to give him some shoulders. Probably, if you want full tracking to work well, the arms should really be about as long as uh, this box, essentially. If you draw an imaginary box, this is how tall he is. This is his arm span. That's going to pretty much match you in full body tracking. It's going to mean you're, uh, when you grab something off the floor, even if you don't have full body tracking, um, you're going to be lined up with the floor. Um, let's give him some fingernails. Um, this doesn't have to be something you would show to your parents and put on the fridge. It's just... Uh, an idea for what the 3D character is going to look like. So I'm going to mimic these shapes when I start modeling. Um, because of that, we don't even have to draw both sides of him. Um, you could just to get an idea of what he looks like. Um, but one other thing we are going to do is look at it from the side. Uh, this drawing is stored in 3D. So, this, wait a minute, where, where is his head? Okay, his head's like right here. So his mouth's gonna go back like here. What does his head look like? I don't know. It isn't that important, but if you have details you really want to get right from concept to, to finish, um, draw them in here. Um, it's going to help later on, and it helps to know, well, I don't like that. Uh, this is just sort of a tube down by his wrist, so I'm going to draw sort of a knobby wrist over here. And now I can see without having made the model. There we go. I've got a concept art. Um, the rest of them, I'm just sort of going to figure out. Maybe I want to draw the feet out a little bit. That's uh, I want to avoid sinking into the ground too much. 
All right, that's the foot. It is sort of in the middle, but uh, we'll live with that. All right, that concludes the concept art. Um, let's get straight into modeling. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, you could start with uh, sculpting, but I'm going to stick to modeling to start with. I'm going to, uh, let me show you that again. I'm going to cut the box in half because I want to mirror uh, this object so that I only have to design one side. Um, I then delete the right half of it, go to the modifiers tab and add a mirror modifier. Uh, you might want to also turn on clipping. That'll just prevent these things from getting outside of the middle. So now we have a box. Let me shrink this down some. And this is his core body. Uh, but it's a little blocky. We can make it a little less blocky, which is going to help us later on. The more vertices we have, uh, the better the deformations are going to be when, when it bends its leg and so on. So what I just did was press Control-1. Sorry, you could have gone over here into the modifiers and created a subdivision surface, which is what we have here. This just smooths out uh, the edges. So we're still working with a cube, which is very easy to work with. And it just makes it into a, a blob, an organic blob. Um, so let's keep going. I'm going to press E to extrude. Uh, now there's two boxes connected. Um, I'm pressing Z to switch between wireframe and solid view. Um, so here we go. Let's start modeling out the arms. If I just look from the, the front, it's a little easier to do this. He's got these weird arms. I'm pressing S to scale down. You can also use uh, these tools here. They're right there, so you don't have to learn all the buttons. Um, so I could go to scale, make this the size I want. Uh, go to extrude. Uh, where is it? Extrude face. Anyway. All right. Um, I recommend learning the buttons S for scale, R for rotate, G for grab or move. Um, it'll just speed things up. So make it a little bigger here. I know it, it doesn't seem to fill out, but once I extrude, you see it fills out there uh, because it just rounds out the end. And I have this really knobby wrist here. Maybe only want it knobby on one side, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lift it up there. Uh, there we go. And uh, I want this to be the palm of his hand. We're gonna go for actually having fingers. Let's try a thumb and three fingers on each hand. Um, let's look at what we're dealing with. This is w way wide for a flat hand. But you know what? Uh, forget the concept art for right now. Uh, you're going to want to end up in unity with uh, the palms facing down. So uh, I'm going to squish this so that it's flat like a hand. Because uh, that's what I want my character to look like. And I'm going to try and make some fingers. Uh, first I'm going to make the thumb by extruding out the side. Um, I'm going to make sure it's kind of the way you'd want a thumb to be. Getting the right... Um, we basically got to get four different boxes out of this. Um, so uh, the way I'm going to do that, and this is easier if you're doing three fingers than four, but yeah. Uh, making really good hands is difficult. Here I'm going to switch, I'm going to press Alt-E, extrude individual faces, and hey, each one of those faces, I just managed to get three out of there, um, and that's great. I'm going to move it along the x-axis. That's right, I, I press G to move it, and then I press S to only move it along that axis. That keeps me from doing weird things I don't want to do. Um, so there's my fingers. 
I almost want to scale it along the y-axis so that they're straighter. That's going to help us rig later. And are they long enough? Sure. And let me give them a little more detail. I'm going to give them control R, a loop cut that just cuts up something. You can cut most anything. Um, and that gives it more vertices. Um, and let's get back to the thumb. There we go. I've read that uh, having your thumb at a 45 degree angle is the ideal. Oh, okay, I want to rotate this. <coughs> and I could look at it like this and rotate it. Uh, but I'm going to show you something. I'm going to hold down. Actually, I'll show you up here. Um, nope, I'm not sure where it is. Oh, there it is. I'm so used to the, the buttons. Um, we can rotate it based on the normals. So, oh, right. For this thumb, it, it doesn't look very good. Um, what I'm trying to show you is that you can do this. Um, I would have been better if I started that earlier at the right angle. So I'm going to be imprecise and just say I'm going to eyeball it, and there we go. It's at a 45 degree angle. You'll see that uh, rigging, that will make rigging easier. This is good. I'm not going to add detail to making the fingernails in right now. It looks pretty much like I wanted it. Um, attaching the, the body to the head. Let's give him a little bit of a hunchback. It sort of fits with the character in the head. The way the mouth is, the mouth is going to go out in front. I've drawn this a little bit wrong because this is conflicting with this. We want this whole thing to be a little bit forward. So um, I'm going to add a whole new cube, which is going to be huge. Oh, right, and then I have to delete half of it. I want to delete vertices. Okay, so that it's mirrored. Um, notice that when I'm switching between vertices, selection, edge selection, face selection, I'm pressing 1, 2, and 3. Um, you can also use this. Uh, if you don't understand those terms, just keep looking and observing, and you will understand simply by example. Um, all right. I'm going to do a loop cut so I can extrude this nose here. I don't want his nose to be in the back of his head. It's just going to be up here. I'm even going to extrude this for even more definitive detail. So he's that got this nose. That's good. Um, it's getting a little complicated to look at this um, concept art, so I'm going to turn it off for now. I'll come back for the legs. But I wanted a basically a big blob for the for the mouth, and that's going to have to be in front of his chest. So I'm going to add another cube, cut in half, delete that. L, by the way, selects everything you're hovering over that's connected. This head and the body are not connected, and that's that's not a completely professional way to make a game model. You'd kind of want everything to be connected, especially if you're going to 3D print it and other details. But we really don't have to worry about that in uh, VR chat. Um, the only real issue is they may not deform together perfectly. The rigging might be a bit hard to get get perfect. The head might move in ways that look like it's not actually connected to the body because it's not actually connected to the body. But whatever. Um, this is going to be his mouth. And uh, that's good. He's just got a sort of a jaw that hangs down. Maybe we'll pull this back a little so it looks looks a little more connected to the character. And uh, we should give him some kind of a neck. 
can be real skinny. This is this is weird, but it's okay. Um, yeah, that'll work. I know this is sort of inside the chest. Do we want to fix that or just leave it? I'm I'm gonna fix it a little bit. All right. So what did his legs look like? Let's do his lower body. Uh, all these view things are over here. You can change the way it looks um, just in Blender. You may find use for all of that, and I'm just looking for the annotations. There we go. Um, so he gets a little bigger down here. Oh, well, this is an issue, isn't it? Um his legs aren't going to look like that unless he's in a sack race. We want individual legs. So I'm going to turn off clipping that I told you to turn on earlier. Uh, that means we can, if we move it a little away from the center, make individual legs. And that's good. Um, he's got these knobby knees, which to do that I'm going to extrude from the knee. And keep going. If you have more loop cuts and things, more edges and vertices at the joints, especially the wrists and fingers and things like that, y the rigging is going to go better. It's got to bend those things a lot, so the more it has to work with, the better. And we have some feet around here. These are kind of low knees in terms of realistic humans. That can end up with worse full body tracking. I'm not going to go super in detail about full body tracking because there are videos that go specifically on that. Um, let me just turn on clipping again so I can fix this without... There we go. Uh, that looks a little bit more like our concept. And uh, we wanted his feet to sort of go up in the middle. So... There we go. I hope I didn't accidentally attach. I think I did. I'm going to turn off clipping and move these feet a little uh, a little farther. I pressed Alt-click. That selects in a loop. Um, so I'm selecting the whole foot. I do these things without thinking about it, but I'll try and let you know um, what they do. That's enough detail for the feet, I guess. Um, something we can do. Let me turn off this again. Oh, wait a minute. I'm missing the eyes. Um, let me just put the cursor there by his eye. Shift S. Um, cursor is selected. I'm going to create a cube. It's going to be his eyeball. And remember, it's not actually creating a cube because of the subdivision. So I really want spheres for eyes. It can be inset. We could make uh, his head indented a little bit. <laughs> I just extruded into the shape itself. It's kind of hard to see what's going on with the subdivision, but... <clears throat> this is what the cubes look like, and then it just gets smoothed out by this. Of course, uh, adding a lot of triangles, vertices, whatever you want to call them, in the process. Um, but we are at... Uh, okay, Blender by default doesn't show you, but we are at a very small amount of triangles. This is very quest-optimized. This is going to be showing up as excellent on quest for even quest users um because we don't we're not worrying too much about detail it's about the design of it really that matters um and of having the features to be able to actually use the avatar um one thing that's going to be an issue i have noticed issues in vr chat when the neck really is so way out of bounds like that. So I'm going to move that so that the head is a little bit more uh, straight up and down the spine. 
which means I need to move the nose forward. <clears throat> there we go. Looks good. Uh, let me just save this. Um, don't forget to save. Uh, something else I can do. Um, am I going to do that first? What's the next step? Uh, let's rig it. So, I don't recommend adding each bone. <coughs> You could go like this, and you could extract and extract and extract, and place all the bones in place, and uh, you have to get it to exactly the same way that Unity wants it to be, and VRChat wants it to be, which is this. So I just start from this. Uh, yeah, clicked. Uh, let me do that again. Um, append. Go to this thing. I'll have a download for this file. Go to object and just append the armature. Um, and this has the right bones, they're just not in the right places. So I'm going to scale the whole thing down a little bit. Um, this, by the way, the proportions as by default of this rig are pretty good for full body tracking. No matter how small or large it is, it's just the proportions between like the arms and the legs and the where the head is. So we're going to make the arms a little bit bigger where I'm going into edit mode on the armature and moving things around I'm pressing the C button to get this other selector you can find that over here but um, I'm hitting the buttons to be quick I don't know where his elbow is I'm just sort of guessing let's say the we want his body to bend in those places. Whoops. I just want to move his wrist. Um, you can look at the the names of the bones to know what they are, but um, this is how VRChat wants them. Shoulder, arm, elbow, wrist. Um, and this is where the body is going to deform once it's in VR chat. His um by the way, A pressing A once selects everything, double tapping A selects nothing. Very useful. Um you'll see that this is at an angle. This is the thumb bones. I'm gonna try and get it in it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna try and get it in place. Um it's palm down, just like Unity wants it. Oops. I was going to say, in Unity, um, it'll try and fix the palm down thing. Even if it isn't in T-Pose, it'll try and fix it into the T-Pose. Um, but it's best to design your things to fit, um, to avoid issues. Uh, we don't need this bone. If I have to do uh, three fingers instead of four, I usually delete <coughs> the ring finger because it's not very useful in terms of expression. Um, these are named little finger, middle finger, so that's what Unity is going to think they are. And we're going to move them on the x-axis a little. Just try and get them where human bones would be. Unity doesn't have... Um, what is it called? There's an extra human bone from here to the wrist and uh, on each finger. But th they're not um, used in Unity, so we're skipping them. Um, let's see. Let's just make sure they're in the right spot. This looks a little bit off. You want your fingers to be decent just because they bend in a lot of places and, um, well, you look at them a lot. Um, if you notice, when you edit, when you're in edit mode, the left and right side move together. That's because, let me open up this side menu. Under tool, the armature in edit mode is under x-axis mirror. Uh, if you make one or editing one, that's very useful. Um, 
Well, let's see about the rest of them. Um, these could go about anywhere. You're thinking, like, where where is this chest? These are just the three spine bones below the neck. That's what that's the number of bones you're stuck with to get it to work in VR chat. Uh, so just try and make it just how you like it. Uh, in terms of full body tracking, you want th these uh, thigh bones to start below where the hip bone starts. You want them to pretty much be opposite each other, and you want this pretty much forward and back to be just about in the middle, and definitely in the middle of these. You don't want these to be like that. You want them to be pretty much straight up and down, and uh, you'll probably get good full body results, assuming the proportions are also accurate. Another thing that can mess it up is if uh, this is like way out of the way. But you stick to the template file, you should be good. Um, are we going to use toe bones? Yeah, why not? Um, we're not actually going to do much weight painting. We're going to use automatic weight painting, and Blender's going to take care of it for us. And then we'll just fix it, the parts that don't work very well. So... Don't nitpick too much. It's not really worth it. The knees are up here. Let's put them down there just to see how that animates. It might be interesting. Um, let's make sure we have the neck and head in the right place. Um, now, the neck is going to be where this rotates from. If I go into pose mode, I'll show you. Um, that's why we're placing these bones in specific places. The other reason is because Blender is going to auto-weight based on um, where these bones are and even, I think, how big they are. So if we make this like this. The only thing we don't want to auto-weight is the eyeballs because then um, the whole pieces of the head are going to move. So I'm just going to keep them out here for now. I'll show you later. For now, we want this whole thing to be weighted to the head bone and neck bone appropriately. Hopefully, we get that. It might it might weight to the chest because it's kind of close. Um, but we'll fix that. This is it for edit mode of the armature, but we're not done rigging. We're going to move to object mode, select the mesh first, which is this object we made. Oh, hold on. First, uh, we should really apply these. I'm pressing control A. You can also press that little button, click apply. Um, now if we go to end edit mode, we see the the mirror mode is gone. It's been applied. Subdivision is gone. It's been applied. We have a lot more vertices and um, we might want to tweak a little bit more at this point before rigging. Um, something I did notice, oops, we forgot to have an inside of the mouth. So how are we going to do that? Um, let's add some loop cuts just so we have more to work with here. And let's select this with the C button and extrude this. Sort of an inside of the mouth. I'm sort of scaling this backwards so that it's rounded in the opposite way. Um, we never decided what kind of mouth we wanted. We could add teeth. Uh, I'm not going to do teeth. It's going to take longer. Um, we'd have to animate that or set up the shape keys for that. But hey, uh, that's a challenge. Maybe I'll show how it works. So I'll add a teeth or two. Just to show you how it's done. It's going to make things harder for us making the shape keys because this is not connected to that. So I'll show you if I go into proportional editing mode, you see here, or press the O button. Um, we're going to switch to connected only, which you can also do with Alt O. And once this is on, I use a scroll wheel to decide how much area this affects. We can move it like that, and we can do all kinds of mouth shapes like that. Uh, but you notice it doesn't move the, the, the square. Um, 
but I'll leave mouth shapes for later. Um, this is fine. Um, that's enough mouth for us to work with. Uh, let's say his mouth is open all the time and then moves when he talks. Uh, I'm saving again and let's move on to weight painting. So as I said, this is the mesh. We've applied the modifiers so that we have these real vertices um, applied and we hold down shift and select the rig. So now that we have both of them selected and the rig is bright orange, the other one is just dark orange outline, we press control P and armature to form with automatic weights. So this is going to connect the, the body mesh to the rig and try to apply weights. So now we can look at the rig in pose mode, uh, which is up here, you'd change that if you haven't caught on, um, and move things around. And this is how it would deform in game. Uh, you move your arm around, it's gonna it's gonna move like that. That means when you move your arm up, okay, down here it's gonna move a little bit. Does that look okay? Yeah. Um, Alt R to reset. Um, we just want to check the joints. Say, okay, nothing horrible is happening. I see when I move this, it moves the the thumb a little bit. It's kind of a bad thing. But it's not terrible, especially given how low poly this is. If I had more loop cuts in there, more vertices, uh, before I did the auto weight, we would be better off in terms of how well the fingers were rigged. But uh, this is good enough. You see, when his chest moves, it's like that. Um, we haven't actually had to do any actual weight painting yet. A lot of his body deforms when he walks. That's all right. Let's find something to fix so I can show you weight painting. Uh, I'm going to guess that there's something wrong with the neck and head. And there isn't. That even looks mostly how I wanted it. Except... Um, uh, you see... It's missing the mouth. It thinks the blender thought the mouth was part of the head. And it, I don't know what it thinks the, the teeth are connected to. So we have a little bit of fixing to do. So, okay, first, first of all, just to make things easy on yourself, go to edit, undo lock object modes. That means we can go back and forth between the mesh and the, the armature a lot easier, which is going to help a lot. Uh, let's go into weight paint mode. Now you can see the red stuff is the stuff that's weighted. The blue stuff is the stuff that's not weighted. Everything else is in between. Uh, I don't know what the teeth are weighted to. That might be nothing. The nose is like sort of half weighted to the neck, which we don't want. It's going to cause it to deform. Uh, we got a little bit of fixing to do. Um, first thing I'm going to do is cut this off. I'm pressing L to select everything that's attached. And uh, I might as well grab these two. I press P, separate by selection. Now they're different objects. So in object mode, this is disconnected from that, which is going to be helpful when we weight paint. So let's look at this. We can select, oh, well, we got to switch this to pose mode. Okay, now we've got the setup we want. Um, we can hold control and click. Oh, I'm sorry, that doesn't show up in the uh, uh, shortcut viewer, but uh, I hold control and click, and you can see that. Um, what are we doing now? Oh, we want to wait this to this bone. So I have this bone selected. Let me switch. This is where you see both the shape keys and the vertex groups, which is, these are groups for weight painting. We see the head is relative to the head bone. The head is selected, so anywhere I paint is going to be weighted to the head bone. I'm going to undo, though, 
Uh, let me let me show you. I'm painting this, but wait a minute. It's only painting on one side. That's not very useful. So let me press N, go into my tool menu. Oh, okay. Um, how do uh, I do this? Okay, this is a little counterintuitive, so follow this. I go into options in the weight paint tool settings. Uh, I'm going to want to turn on auto normalize. And what that does is when I paint something to one bone, it removes the weight from everything else. That's very useful. I don't want it to be weighted to the neck. Otherwise, it's going to be weighted to both, and that'll cause issues. Um, but I'm still painting on one side of it. So, by the way, I just always have this on. You might come across situations you don't need it, but I feel like it should be on by default. Um, the other part is... Where is it? I think it's under fall-off. Fall-off shape projected. That's not what we want. I just went over this to figure this out. Um, what was it? Okay, okay. So there's three different menus you gotta find. Um, this for auto normalize, fall off to switch from sweared to projected. You might want to switch back, back and forth, and then undo front faces only, because we want to paint through the entire thing. That's what we want. Okay, let me go over here and paint. I kind of want to be af afraid of painting the neck. Uh, you might want to separate this object from that object and just to make sure you're only painting one at a time. This is a pretty simple example, so I don't think we need to do that. Um, now I move the head. I see that some of it's still a little bit yellow. Let me just make sure. Um, you can change the, the weight and things like that, strength. Uh, or you'd want the weight to stay at 1. If you wanted to erase it, I guess you could set it to 0. But uh, there's kind of an issue with that. I'm not going to go into it. But uh, I'm not going to go into advanced weight painting. But this is enough to fix your model, fix the advanced painting. Let me go into the, the neck and just make sure that's that's good. Okay. The bottom of the neck is weighted to the chest a bit, so that this never sort of goes outside of the chest, if you look at it like that. This looks pretty good in terms of how things can go wrong. It's a little twisted when he turns around. What I could do is add a few loop cuts. We can afford it in terms of this is still a very good avatar, even on Quest. Uh, very good, I mean, not in actual value, but in performance rating system for VR chat. Um, so here we go. And since I, I guess some people weren't aware of this, you can import this into anything, really. You, you've got an FBX at the end or a blend file. Uh, there's all kinds of games that allow you to have custom avatars, and this is going to work in most of them. Um, we're just focusing on VR chat, though. That's the popular one. Neos VR, Chill Out VR, it's, it's all going to work. Um, maybe with some minor differences. Um, so what are, what's next? Uh, the eyes. Right, so we have to weight them. So they're, uh, let's make them their separate object, just to make it easier. I'm going to select that eyeball, and I'm going to use Shift-S cursor to select it. And that means I can now move this bone in edit mode, selection to cursor. And that just snaps it to perfectly that location, which you kind of want perfect for these eyeballs, because they're round and they rotate. Uh, you don't really need it, though. Um, but let's weight them. Uh, weight paint mode. And we're just going to weight that to that eyeball. And since it's not mirrored... Hey, wait a minute. It sort of is weighted. Um, the auto weight must have sort of gotten the eyes. But something else we can do is select this in edit mode, go over here and make sure I have right eye selected and press assign. And if you see this bug, 
you see it's distorting instead of rotating. This one is rotating. That's because I had auto normalize on when I painted it. I didn't paint this one. Um, so something I, I could paint it, that would do it, but I just want to show you Well, they've moved it, so uh, I'm not sure where the button is. Um, but it, what would you want is there's a function in weight paint mode called normalize all. If you press F3, you can access everything in Blender by typing it in in the search bar if you lose something. Uh, weights normalize all. Now it's not deforming. Okay, so those are most of the issues you'll come across while weight painting. Um, some things are a pain, like uh, I'm control clicking, by the way, to switch between objects um, in weight paint mode. Like armpits can be a pain, uh, shoulders can be a pain. Um, but it's more or less good. You can use the tips I gave you and probably do fine. Um, this is fully rigged, I would say, for VR chat. We've done all the rigging necessary. Um, so let's save, move on. Uh, let's paint it before we go any further. Uh, I'm, I right click, there's a lot of things in the right click menu that are useful. Um, but I'm going to click Shade Smooth to get them to be smooth instead of uh, what it was before. And um, let's paint. Uh, go over to texture paint. You could use vertex paint. Um, that's sort of an old-fashioned way of doing it. That's very limited. Um, I'm not going to show it to you. I felt like mentioning it. We go to texture paint. First thing we notice is it's pink. Pink in Blender, it means um, a texture is missing. Um, and we go over here, we see no textures because we haven't done anything with the material. It's just the default material. So the uh, easiest way to do this, um, add a texture. If you want really good details, you can turn this up to twice or four times this value. Um, but this is good enough for us. Um, I think we need to turn off alpha. Uh, also, the basic color you're going to have is this. Uh, in the old Blender tutorial I did, I did it a little differently. I baked colors. I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to paint everything. But your base color, I don't know what color it's going to be. We didn't uh, decide that before. So uh, there we go. That's his color. Uh, then we're going to paint on other colors. Um, same deal as weight painting. When I paint, it's only going to paint one side of them. Whoops. Um, I skipped a step. Uh, let's undo that. Uh, we never unwrapped him, which is something that's kind of complex to do in Blender, and I'm not even going to go into that. Uh, I'd recommend other tutorials for that. That can get advanced, uh, but we're going to go into edit mode, press U, and smart UV project, which is, just does it for us. Let's uh, turn up the margin to prevent bleeding. Um, and there we go. You don't see it but there's a UV map now. You can tell because now I can paint and it doesn't look completely broken. Um, if I go into texture paint, oh, they have a whole thing for this, UV editing. This might be helpful for you. Um, I made a bunch of my own custom, so I'm not really familiar with these, but you can explore that. Um, let me just, since I'm in a different view, I'll have to turn off annotations again. Uh, okay. So texture painting, great. Uh, make sure you're in texture paint mode. And I'm going to click this button to hide the all the stuff. So we can just look at him. Um, we still want this tool menu up because that's where we pick colors and things. So we can paint, and it paints onto this image. Um... I think I think if you close Blender and open it again after saving, this image should be here, but it may not. Uh, just to be safe, I'm going to save this to the Unity, Unity project. Um, you could save it anywhere, but to save time, I'm going to save it there. 
image, save as, and this is my VR chat SDK. And uh, let make a new folder. What do we name them anyway? Um, blarg. All right. Uh, all these settings are fine. Um, oops. Uh, he looks. I didn't mean to have this white spot on him. We could just sort of er erase it, I guess. Use the color picker. Okay, there we go. I didn't want to hit the undo button because I I did a few things. Um, here we go. There's a little bit of white on him somewhere. Anyway, not super important. Uh, let me go on. Uh, options you're gonna have want to have by default. Again, I use the default Blender file, and I think by default you should have this up five or six. You can go higher. Um, if you have a bigger image, uh, you're not going to hurt yourself with this setting, um, the way we're doing it at least. Uh, symmetry, we're going to mirror all our painting uh, so it goes from one side to the other. Um, this doesn't auto save to that file, so uh, image save once you're done. Um, Let's get to painting. Oh, there's one other thing. The fall off. Oh, I forget. Again, they changed this. Um, we want to be able to paint through it at first. So I'm pretty sure if you turn these off, I can, yep. Those are the two settings that you want to change um, to switch between painting on one side or painting all the way through it. So let's give him some pants. He's kind of got earthy tones. I didn't make any toes, so let's say those are his shoes. Somehow I missed that uh, that bit of him. Um, I'm just getting the basic colors down. Uh, so I'll do details like shoelaces later. Whatever else we want to add. Um, it helps to be in the orthographic view, which is when you're staring at it straight on instead of the perspective view. I forgot where you set that. Oh yeah, right here. Um, and then you can use these buttons if you don't have a numpad. So I'm even going to make a mess there because I'll paint that later. Um, and we did want them to have fingernails. We have fingers and fingernails. That's very advanced. Um, do our best for the thumbs. All right. Um, the eyeballs have to be a color. Okay. I have to turn this back on because I want to separate, just like the weight painting. We want to separate this stuff so we can paint it separately instead of painting the wrong thing like we just did. We can put a belt on them. Um. So control click, no, that's not it. We gotta switch to object mode, switch to this. Um, we want the eyes, texture paint, white. Um, object mode, switch to this. Oh, I guess that's green. We gotta fix it though. Mm, there's the color picker. Teeth, white, maybe a little yellow. Mm, okay. Um, the reason in object mode is like this because we got to switch to texture mode. And that'll take the texture straight from over here so we can view it properly. 
So now back into texture paint, and we'll add some details. I'm going to turn this on and that on, which means that we only paint on one side of it, so we're not painting the back of the eyeballs. Um, we want some really bright colors for the, for the eyes. That's a little uh, details. Give them a little highlight. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? Um, just give them some some details. You can change the uh, strength. So I can shade his eyes in a little bit. There we go. Uh, what else? Some kind of belt buckle that looks crazy. Uh, whatever else we want to do. Shading. Uh, let's. Oh, we wanted to do shoelaces. just to give it some some extra information of what's going on with this character um that's good uh one other thing inside of the, of the mouth we want to make the inside lo of the mouth look different from the outside um and we can give it lips a little color. We're going to try and get them color where the vertices are, which if you have to look in wireframe mode, you can sort of see. Um, looks like the mirror paint had a little bit of an issue there, but this is good. Um, wow, that's some sloppily applied lipstick. Let's call that done. Uh, I just selected all in object mode and press Control J to join them all into the body. While we're at it, let's press F2 and name it the body. Uh, I don't think that matters in VR Chat anymore, but um, old habits die hard. What's next? Um, we've got the texture; it's fully rigged. Uh, let's just save the texture. Um, we'll see that pop up in Unity. But we're not ready for that yet. We want eye tracking. We have eye tracking. These work. Um, we want blinking. We want mouth shapes. You could add a jawbone, but on this character and a lot of characters, I think visemes are best. We might want to add a, a few more loop cuts. This won't mess up the weight painting um, to add a loop cut at this point, but too much will be... Too many changes at this point are going to mess up the texture and the... Uh, You'll see the texture change. Oh, no, it doesn't. Uh, I forgot I said that. Um, if you do this, it's going to sort of mess up the texture. Hard to see what's happening there, but anyway. Um, let's fix the... Or not fix. We're going to add shape keys. So what do we want? Um, we want a blink with the new SDK, SDK3. VR chat allows us to look up and look down to have shape keys for that. You could do it with bones, but we're going to do it with shape keys. Uh, ah, your, and there. I know these are commonly used. I know they're like an inaccurate translation or something like that, but we're going to stick with that because cat's plugin, which I didn't talk about. I hope you you've used the cat's plugin. For Blender, it's very useful for converting models, but the only thing we're going to use it for is shape keys. Um, you could also use it for eye tracking if you if you don't have it right. But this is going uh, uh, to do eye tracking slash eye movement fine. Um, note that the these are pointed straight up and down, which helps. Um, what are we doing? Uh, blinking. Blinking, we can make these uh, sort of shrink. Remember I talked about this, proportional editing? That's much better. 
um, and move it forward on the y-axis. Scroll bar. Oops. I, I want this to... Uh, there we go. This is the look we want. If I go back into object mode, I can slide this and see what it looks like. I mean, that looks great. Um, look up is just... You're not going to actually move the eyeballs because the bones are going to do that. But it's it's just a little extra expression. They let you have... Um, this is sort of what your eyes do when you look all the way up or look down. And that's what will happen in game when the eyes are doing that. Um, the, the upper brow sort of does this. And you'll see in Unity you can preview it um, in SDK 3. Uh, now... Make sure you're selecting these. Whatever you've got selected when you're in edit mode, that's what you're editing. So what I want to do is um, I actually want the mouse to be closed by default. This is a complex operation I'm going to show you to do. Go to the basis. I'm going to select the entire tooth. Then I'm going to select this stuff. And we're going to use proportional editing connected and move all this at once and the tooth moves with the lip and the rest of the mouth sort of moves with it. He looks a lot grumpier now, doesn't he? And his tooth sort of uh, is in the way. Um, note that we're on the basis shape key. This is what the body looks like without any shape keys. If we move this, like if I, if I change this uh, vertice, it would mess up the blink work we did earlier. So just be aware of that. This, you really want to do the basis first. These aren't connected though, so uh, they're not going to impact each other, uh, what we're doing right now. So let me just select the tooth. I'm going to change where it is. I can do that because I haven't started making these yet. So this is what he's going to look like by default. <laughs> I, uh, I like it. Um, let's just make sure he can talk properly. So now we're going to do the opposite of what we just did with the ah selected. So the ah, you can look up what these are. There's, I think there's 14 different shapes. Um, you can look up references for them. Uh, now that they're really close together though, I'm, I'm, I, I screwed myself over a little bit because now when I move this, all the other stuff is close to it. Um, I could have done this in a smarter way. But I'm going to try and recreate what I had a moment ago. I could have sort of saved that and used blend from shape. Uh, I don't know where that is. So I'm just type it. Blend from shape. There. So control V. Blend from shape. And then you can basically revert it back to another shape key. Um, but I skipped that step. Uh, so I have to do some messy fixing. What is up with that? What is that? I'll show you an opportunity to, um, it gives me an opportunity to show you something else. Um, I think it's in control V. Smooth vertices. It just sort of makes things smooth, which can be create unwanted effects like if I did it on here oops I did do it on the cube then the cube is all uh, smooth which you don't want all right this isn't gonna look perfect because we've messed with it so much in terms of its transition between in object mode I'm looking at it go from one to the next so the tooth uh, you want to move teeth without any deforming them. So you want to move the entire row of teeth at once. I'm just showing you one, but if you have a whole bunch of teeth, you want to basically... Um, if I was to show you that again, uh, a good way to do teeth is to have a jawbone, but we don't have one. Uh, if we had a jawbone, we could like move it and... Uh, this is a great tool in the modifiers 
click up save as shape key and then I'm gonna alt R to set this back to normal and I'll show you um, this armature one just got created see that's a shape key now so you could use that for mouse shapes and then I could edit that further and do whatever with that I'm just showing you that's what you do with a jawbone we don't have a jawbone so let me just show you I have the bottom tooth all the bottom teeth selected I go to 3d cursor which is right here it's that's where rotations happen around this is the 3d cursor now I'm rotating like there was a jaw so I do that um, I'm going to select this and use that blend from shape I was talking about. Control V. Blend from shape. I'm just, I'm basically copying from the A. Ah. And this is my O, or your. But if you make the sound O with your mouth, that's what it looks like. This is also, it's hard to select these, so I'm going to press Control plus after selecting the one in the middle. I'm going to do a little more smoothing smooth vertices all right did i hide what happened to the oh that's way down there uh, i've made a few too many mistakes here so it may not be very clear about this workflow uh, but here we go we got that that's O. But this isn't really an O shape. It just move. Wait a minute. Why is it moving both ends? Do I have mirror editing on? Oh, I guess I do. It doesn't always work perfectly. Corners kind of come in. That's a bit of a mess, but that's as good as we're gonna get. We gotta move this, these teeth, or the singular tooth, just sort of go along with it, and that looks good. This is gonna animate well. In between, it's gonna be like when you're talking, it's like sort of going f between these three. You can make fourteen, but I'm gonna make three because it's a fast way. There is sort of uh, E. Uh, it's going to use this for E and F. And I was making the F sound, if you couldn't tell. Um, let me switch back to the median point. So I'm going to stretch it in a cartoony way. And rotate these inward. So that's, uh, we got everything we need. Um, all we have to do is use the CATS plugin. I'm not going to show you how to install the CATS plugin. If you look up, I'll give you a link. But um, once you have it installed, you just have to enable it in your add-ons. And you'll see this menu on the right-hand side. Or you have might have to press N to bring out the menu. But um, here we go. Visemes. This has a lot of useful tools if you don't know about it. I mean, just look that up on your own. But uh, all we're going to use, eye tracking is already set up, uh, at least for SDK 3. If you're using SDK 2, set this up. Um, we're going to go to Visemes. We named these correctly, so um, they're showing up automatically. You might have to select them. Uh, C for uh, O, C, H. And it's going to generate all 14, 15 technically. Um, and you'll see they're just mixed between the other ones. And that looks beautiful. Uh, it's going to look good in game. I save it. I think we're ready to export. I don't think I missed any steps. Um, let's try it. Uh, it's got an export button. It's the same as pressing file, export, FBX. Except it, it presets them some settings to make it work a little better um yeah you don't have to look at this stuff uh just put it where your 
VRChat SDK for Unity is. Uh, and I put it here. I've got that shortcut. I already put the texture there earlier. What did I name them? Blarg. Blarg. Okay. Let's name them Blarg. Um, and export. Now we should be done with Blender, unless we made a mistake. So let's go into Unity. Again, I already have the VRChat SDK in here. Um, that's the only thing you'll need. Um, oh, I could have shown you dynamic bones. We could add, like, something. Um, but, uh, let's forget about that. We showed you how to add bones and all that. Um, I'm making a new scene and dragging him in. And he is the same height we made him in Blender. We could, um scale them up and this is uh, an effective way of doing this if you wanted them to be really tiny or just make another version that's tiny uh, let's stick with that height um, he already has the texture you might have to like drag this on um, but he doesn't need that you might have to go to materials and click extract materials just here um, that way then you can edit this if you wanted to change it to like a quest shader. Um, I'm on the PC version right now, but you can use quest shaders on the PC. They tend to have less issues. The standard sort of has like highlights and stuff and whatever. Uh, this is for our level of detail of character. This is great. Um, and okay, let's get on to... Uh, you create an avatar descriptor and um, this is the SDK 3 again I'm on um, the most recent one it lets you edit the view position that's very nice it has this nice little editor this little ball is going to be where you see and it's uh, going to affect um, uh, things like head rotation, you really don't have to worry about that. Just put it where the eyes are, maybe a little bit in front. If you put it like here, it's not going to hurt you because uh, you're not going to see your own head. Anything weighted to the head bone is going to be invisible to you. So um, that looks good. Um, it should work in full body. Uh, let's get to the other things. Keep in mind I s skipped a step. Uh, we'll get to that later, setting it to humanoid. Um, uh, when when you go in the SDK 3, it warns you about all this stuff, so we'll get to those errors. Um, auto detect, wow, that's very nice. Um, uh, since we used cats, it picked all these, otherwise you have to pick ah, you're on there for everything, and yeah. I look enable, oh, this isn't automatic. I'm going to hold alt and left click here. Uh, to expand all of this, let's see, left eye, right eye. Uh, because it lets you select this, you can do some pretty weird character designs with eyeballs in weird places. It's pretty open-ended. You can control exactly how they look, which is kind of a bummer because now you have to do it for each one. But I can control, I want his eyes to look like that. That's the farthest his eyes go. Uh, in that direction. That's the farthest I go in that direction. I do know there's a bug related to this where it might look past that direction. Uh, I assume they'll fix that eventually. Okay, that gives us a lot of control over his expression, uh, how the character looks from that angle. Uh, eyelids, that's for blinking and things like that. Uh, we went for blend shapes. We made that blink and look up and look down. So we'll just select them here. Doesn't matter what they're titled. So now it's actually displaying for us uh, both the shape key and looking down um, and the blink. You notice this is a bug, um, or it's not a bug, it's just unintended. Um, the shading looks different when a shape key is on. Um, VR chat warns you about this, so you shouldn't have to worry about it. Uh, that's this right here. 
So we go to upload. You might have to log in here. Um, we go to build. We have the avatar here. It recognizes it. Uh, auto fix. That just makes things faster. This fix that fixes that shading issue I was talking about. Um, that I forget what that even is for, but just auto fix. Um, this. This doesn't have an auto fix button. It's not humanoid. So if I brought it into VRChat, it would just T-pose everywhere. It wouldn't animate. So let's select the FBX we made. That's where we got pulled the materials out. You could change settings here. You don't really need it. Um, animation type humanoid. That's what Unity. Uh, that's what VRChat uses to animate models and uh, full body and all that stuff. Uh, let me just save it. Tar. So I'm putting the chest on uh, it. Let me just explain. It recognized all her bones, even the eye bones. Uh, don't worry about that. That's just the way it visualizes uh, the head bone to the uh, the eye bone. Um, everything looks good. It's T-posed. There's a little bit of a bend to the knee. There's a little bit of a bend to the, the arms. Um, it's a tiny bit so it knows which way the, the knees bend. Um, but VR chat is going to require, and it'll yell at you for this, so uh, don't worry too much about it, uh, about forgetting it. You do have to worry about it. There we go. Reset the chest. I said you had those three bones, hip, spine, chest. There they are. Uh, that's the way it has to be for VR chat. We got shoulders, we've got legs, we've got fingers, and yeah, recognize that the ring finger is missing. Uh, which again, like you can do rock and roll by bending these fingers. That's why I removed the ring finger. Um, and you know, middle finger, whatever. It'll map into the gestures in game properly. We've got the eyes, everything set. All we had to do is set the chest bone. I click apply. I'm back here. Uh, for some reason, the lighting changed. Who cares? Um, uh, only what's here and underneath is going to upload. If you want to add props or something and you didn't want to do it in Blender, you know, you just drag stuff in. I'm not going to do that. Um, I might have props somewhere. Anyway. That's irrelevant. Uh, there's plenty of videos for that stuff. Uh, we're on the final step, aren't we? We have everything. I like to turn this off for full body. Um, I'm pretty sure we did everything. Uh, it's uh, excellent. This is going to be excellent on Quest 2. We only had barely any triangles. Um, one thing I'm going to do before I upload it, I just want to make sure it, uh, I'm going to do this, uh, VR chat SDK, examples, animation, uh, where are the animation, proxy animations, um, I'm going to drag sit onto them, go to the animation tab, oh, I'm sorry, my Unity looks different because I have a layout. Your, your Unity is going to look like this, but it's the same titled um, things over here. If you if you miss something, go up here and you'll find uh, animation, animation. I can put that anywhere. This is another customizable interface. Um, I want to preview it on him. And, yeah, his hands are warping through his body. That's how we might look when you're sitting down without any VR, but that's good enough. Um, I just want to make sure all his bones are functioning, and they are. Um, if he wasn't humanoid, that animation wouldn't work, and if it, something else wasn't happening, that animation wouldn't work. I'm just going to rotate this so when we have the screenshot. It'll upload. VR chat SDK. Show control panel. Build and publish for Windows. Um, 
I think I made a video on uploading it to Android. Um, you have to upload it separately. It's kind of a pain. But um, if you want to use it for Quest, that's what you have to do. Um, the one last step I wanted to show. Some people had an issue if they have a very small screen resolution. Uh, the thing, the menu that it's about to pop up here can sort of be too small. So you have to like expand the window or uh, something like that. And there we go. This will upload. Um, I guess I can show you. You can change the preview. Oh no, he's got the sitting thing on him. Uh, yeah. Make sure you delete that before you upload. I have to undo this and upload again. But um, there we go. Uh, we're all done. Um, let me know uh, what you make with this. Uh, and have fun. Ask questions. Uh, enjoy the 3D pro process.